Sashi Buri, man. What's good, y'all? I am Winston A. Marshall, a.k.a. The Swaggy Blurred, and the strike is over, baby, which means I am back. I am here to give you my thoughts, my feelings, my uh, analysis, if you will, of the Marvels. This is the newest film of uh, the MCU. Uh, this is a film that has been divisive on a number of different reasons for a number of different reasons. Uh, you got some cases where people are just going to be fucking haters to be haters. Uh, you got a case where people have meaningful things to say as far as critique goes for the film. And then you're going to have people that love the film, whether blindly or because they actually enjoyed it. Um, I have a tendency to find myself in the camp of I had a really, really good time with this film. Uh, I think there's a lot of strong, positive things to say about the film, but there's also a lot uh, to be discussed, to be critiqued uh, as far as just being the best film that it could possibly be. Um, so uh, I'll give you a heads up that this is a somewhat spoiler review. So if you haven't seen the film and you don't want that ruined for you, please be sure to uh, go check out the movie first and then come back. But I'm going to save my main discussion. Uh, if you go over to the Christian Harloff channel, uh, myself, Christian, and Koi Jandru really broke down how we felt about it. I'm really going to kind of give some more points that I didn't get a chance to really touch on or expand on just a little bit from that review. Uh, but I'm not going to get into full crazy plot points. Uh, again, uh, there will be some. So please be sure if you if you don't want that ruined, you know that. But uh, uh, so the thing about this film that I think that I love more than anything, um, one of the things that made me fall in love with the Guardians of the Galaxy is the chemistry between uh, an ensemble cast uh, really going through and forward. Um, I did like Captain Marvel, the original film. I do think that there were also some problems there. Got a little boring, got a little predictable. Um, I also, because you kind of had... Uh, Brie Larson playing Carol Danvers as someone essentially with amnesia. At times, it felt a little anemic, um, and we're supposed to really be about her. And like, so there were really cool moments where she, you know, higher, faster, farther. Uh, you know, she was showing off to be strong and stuff. But I think about Carol in the comics. Uh, she's headstrong, and not just in like a girls are get it done, uh, as the boys, the the show the boys would say, uh, Stormfront Lord. Um, I mean it in the sense that, like, I think of Civil War II, and I think about her, like, philosophically headbutting with Tony Stark about whether or not to use future tech, uh, essentially to use a an inhuman who could see the future, uh, and essentially minority report it, um, you know, look at uh, a situation, someone's going to commit a crime according to this uh, premonition, and Carol is you know, military girl, uh, you know, part of the Air Force and everything like that. Um, she is very just like pragmatic and very logical in how she deals with stuff like that. Um, whereas ironically, in this case for Civil War II, Tony is actually the more emotional one. Um, he is thinking about how morally it's wrong to do something where you don't have proof that that person is going to actually, without a shadow of a doubt, um, know the future. Uh, and, you know, if you make different decisions, obviously, then the future would change. I say all that to say... That is a very specific type of character. That's a very specific type of mentality that you really see. And I didn't necessarily get that from Carol in the first film. I got a little bit more of it in this one, but we were really kind of touching on the humanity side of it. And that I, one of the things that I do remember um, that really kind of broke her down as, you know, Carol continued, because this is one of my favorite Carol stories personally is, is Civil War II. Um, as it kept broken it down, her, her humanity kind of came back and she started to feel guilty. And it's one of those things that you see happen, uh, you know, a couple of times with like Superman uh, or anybody that has that kind of raw power where if they get too uh, angry, if they get too vengeful or whatever, they can go too far. And that's really kind of one of the main plot points that you see out of Carol here, as you see out of Brie Larson here, is she went to go destroy the Supreme Intelligence, which is great. I, that needed to happen. Supreme Intelligence is pretty damn evil, causing all these wars. But in the process, destroyed the planet of the Kree. And there was a lot of innocent Kree. Um, like, yes, you're a part of that empire, but, like, you know, they weren't the ones out here, like, you know doing exactly what the Supreme Intelligence was saying to conquer other worlds. And, you know, that, that leads to a whole longer philosophical conversation um, about, you know, uh, if somebody is in charge 
of, uh, you know, a planet, an empire, a government, whatever, like, are the people directly responsible, which is, that that's one of the things that, like, I liked about this film, is it raised a lot of questions um, about about that, about the, the fallout of, of the empires uh, and the people that were a part of it and, you know, how guilty are they and do they deserve certain things. Uh, you're talking about, uh, you know, refugees at one point. Um, you, you, you cover a lot of different bases and you cover a lot of personal ones that I really like as well. Um, you know, the idea of what it feels like to have a family member, specifically like a mentor, uh, like an auntie, a mom, a, you know, a parent, a parental figure, just abandon you and it's a really interesting dy- uh, dichotomy between Carol and um, uh, Photon uh, played by Tiana Paris uh, the idea of you know this was the, your other parent and and you essentially needed them there and they weren't there they never came back they said they were going to it felt like sadly it's weird to say but the dad it's like I'm gonna go to the <laughs> go to the store and get some milk real quick and that nigga never comes back. <laughs> like it kind of gives me that those same kind of vibes, man. And so that dichotomy was very interesting compared to uh, the heart and soul of the movie. Iman Vellani playing Kamala Khan, her family, her parents, her brother, really in her business all the time, um, and really being to help co-raise her and genuinely be there. Um, so it just gave. Uh, really interesting, uh, like thoughts about family and what that means. Uh, the idea of maybe your power getting out of your own hands. Um, what it means to connect with another generation. There's a lot of generational talk. Again, Kamala Khan trying to explain it to her parents and her parents imparting wisdom to her. Nick Fury, who's around, who doesn't really do a lot, but like you know, since he's a lot older, you know, he's kind of helping impart some battle strategy stuff. But he's really letting the three of them kind of handle it. And then obviously, uh, Carol mentoring the these two new young heroes, but also feeling like, you know, she's got her own flaws and she doesn't want to pass that on to them. So there, there's a lot of stuff that's actually talked about throughout the film. A lot of ideas that I think were, I, I noticed them. Um, again, times they could have been executed a little bit better. Like I think one of the things, and this is a kind of a major plot point, uh, the spoiler for the ending here. Um, there's a point at which uh, a they've been trying to stop these wormholes, these like rifts in space time that have been happening that the villain was creating. Um, and one gets too big, and so you end up with uh, Photon realizing that she is the only one that has the ability to kind of close it back. Uh, you know, she takes the bracer, she goes to close it, and when it happens, Carol can't get there in time. Um, she races as fast as she can to try and save, um, uh, you know, Lieutenant Trouble. Um, Oh my goodness, Monica Rambeau. And she can't get there in enough time. And so for me, what would have been the logical choice as an actor, what I would have as a director asked of the actor, that's the perfect time for a full breakdown. You already saw Carol say that she felt guilty about abandoning her niece. If essentially you get to that point and then she doesn't get to her niece in time to save her, and she's now feel like in her mind she's lost her again. I, that full breakdown, just just losing it, and and that's where you then have on top of that because of the bond that's been formed between these three girls, and specifically the new bond that's formed between Kamala and uh, Carol. That's a moment where all of a sudden she's gl- just like she glommed onto Monica earlier when she was hurting. Now she gloms onto Carol. And that's just an emotional, powerful moment that if we had seen that come out, I think would have, for a lot of people, changed how they felt about it because then there would have been a serious emotional hook. Um, I think that's the thing. There's a lot of light hooks uh, kind of for that. Like you got the fish on the line, but you you didn't secure it. You know what I'm saying? You didn't bring it in uh, fully. But again, there are some things that just work. Like I really love, I know not everybody loved the montage sequence. I really loved it because of the whole double dutch. I thought there was a lot of fun humor there. It was cool to see them working to balance their powers out. I love me some Beastie Boys, so you're always gonna, I'm always gonna love a sequence with that, man. Um, I thought the fight choreography was phenomenal. 
I, I really, really loved how that worked. It reminded me a lot of Guardians 3, and you had the, kind of the roving camera as all the different people are like kind of fighting themselves. There was a, there was a fluid nature to um, you know the, the, the power switching and all that, especially once they got on the same page. That just it, it was just very beautifully choreographed. Um, so you got stuff like that. And then again, I, I, I took my girlfriend um, to the screening to the press screening I was at. Um, and she loved the film and specifically she said for her, and this is kind of what the aim clearly was is you, and, and, and you see that with Marvel all the time. It's something that they've done is they always try and reach out to different audiences and they let each of those stories kind of live in their own space, but then they all collectively come together. Right. Um, so this was definitely a film for the girls. Um, and so what she loved was seeing their unique things that they did as a group of girls together. Um, so for example, when Carol's like, okay, we're going to have to go to this one planet and I'm going to be real with you, bro. Um, I kind of knew this nigga over here and I, 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 I got a, yeah, um, we're going to, Okay, what you mean you knew a dude over here? Oh, well, you know, I don't want, really want to talk about it. Oh, my love, my wife. You're what? What the fuck? Like that, that whole moment, she was dying laughing because she was thinking about all the time she's been with her girls and, and somebody's too embarrassed to admit to something they've done or a guy that they hooked up with or dated or whatever, um, you know, and they're trying to play it down and all that. Makes sense. We've all had those kind of moments to, to things like that in our friend groups where we can relate, you know? And so she said moments like that really connected for her. Also, the fact that, like, the villain, they were like, come on, girl. Like, I know we've been at odds with each other. I know I destroyed your planet, but can we put it aside? Can we come together and, and, and I'll help you save your planet? I can restart the sun. I just found out I could do that. I didn't know I could do that. And she goes, okay, fine. And as soon as she lifts it up, she goes, screw you, bitch. And tries to kill Kamala Khan instead, bro. And so this idea of the pettiness, that's the way she described it, the pettiness, essentially, uh, that also felt very, like, something that girls, like, uh, she said, you know, we've seen it. But, like, she said specifically that, that that's exactly what you would do. If you don't like a bitch, you don't like a bitch. You know, that they <laughs> ain't going to be no just sunshine and rainbows. You're still probably going to want to swing. Um but all that being said, you know, I brought up the villain. I, you know, I do like her as an actress. I know that I, I, I don't remember the young lady's name. Let me pull it up real quick. But uh, I do know that uh, Tom Hiddleston, which was pretty cool, um, is dating her. Uh, it's a significant other. Um, and he, uh, you know, obviously Loki just ended. So, you know, he came out and was like, you know, I'm proud of my baby. She's out here doing the damn thing, you know. And so just giving her love. Uh, Zawe Ashton. Uh, I believe is her name. Yes, that is who that is. Um, playing Dar Ben. Um, anyway, you, you so you you got that kind of pettiness, which you know she really said that that rang true to her. Um, but yeah, like you know that those are those are kind of my main points, I guess that uh, that I didn't love uh, about or, or, or that, that you know uh, to really talk about. Again, we went into it more over on Christian's uh, channel. So please go over there and check out that, uh, you know, special Capes and Cows episode of the big thing covering the full spoiler review. Um, other than that, man, I mean, the little things that I do appreciate, I do appreciate trying to incorporate Bollywood one way or the other. Uh, the musical number wasn't really for me, uh, but I do like the kind of nod. Uh, I would have probably just structured it a little bit differently. Um you know, uh, the cats thing to me was kind of funny. Um, could have done without it, but it is kind of funny. I just wish that there had maybe been more. I know they said that Goose was acting kind of weird, but if maybe like Goose was a little more fair. I know Goose was eating more, but if Goose was like a little more feral or like felt like a cat in heat sort of, I would have kind of alluded to it, which I think would have been. I don't know. It, it just seems like a bit that you're just trying to do a bit one way or the other. Uh, but I, I will say, honestly, man, like, you know. Nina Costa is an incredibly talented director. Um, th this feels like we got to see a lot of her vision, uh, but then you know also there was um, a clearly studio like influence in a lot of it too. So you you kind of got um, we're we're seeing a lot of that with Marvel right now, and I'm very curious to see. And I, I think part of that has to do with um, making sure we're getting the story kind of back on track. 
but then also I think maybe feeling like there are some missteps earlier on in these new phases, and so there, there's kind of this feeling of riding the ship one way or the other, but we'll see. I'm curious what you think, man. So uh, thank you so much for watching this. Go down in the comments, man. Tell me what you thought about it. Um, hey, yo, be nice. I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll be, I'll be real with you. I'm totally down to have people, you know, discuss uh, and talk it out. But I ain't about all the shits, man. If you just come in here talk shit, get best, best understand. I'm a bounce your motherfucking comment. I don't give a fuck. I really don't. You know what I'm saying? But you got something to critique it about. If you got something po like, it doesn't have to be positive. But if you have something like well-structured critical to say i want to hear man i want to hear what your thoughts are and where you think this could have been better or what you loved about the film man and uh all that good stuff if i had to give it a rating man like i said i had a good time uh but i, I didn't think it was the best film of all time so i'll go right up the mo road man i'll give it a three out of five um you know straight up the middle uh but you know again I know not everybody feels that way. That's why I want to know. So be sure to leave that down there, man. And I'm, I'm, I'm so happy to be back. Like I said, I got my CPT reviews. Uh, I was in the middle of doing a whole breakdown of Mission Impossible for Dead Reckoning. Um, so those are going to be coming out. Uh, I had a couple more Indiana Jones films to drop. Those are going to be coming out, man. I got a lot of great stuff uh, coming out as far as those reviews, those analysis, those talks. Uh, and I got some more comedy stuff coming out too, which I'm really excited about as well. So uh, I got nothing but love for all of y'all. Thank you so much for rocking with me. Um, I will see you on the next one. And y'all take care of yourself, man. Peace.